Now that is the sound of nostalgia right there. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today we have something very special to look at. Today, we are going to be exploring and looking through my 15-year-old Pokemon Leaf Green version save file. I got this game all the way back in 2004. It was basically my first modern Pokemon game. I have so many memories with this game, going over to friends' houses, trading and battling Pokemon, trying to be the best like no one ever was, and today, it's gonna be nice revisiting all those memories with you. I remember getting this game all those years ago at Target, out of all places. I was there with my mom, and I was really young, so obviously I couldn't buy it myself, and I was already a huge Pokemon fan. I had Pokemon Gold version, but the problem with Pokemon Gold was it couldn't connect to the newer games. I had a lot of friends with Ruby and Sapphire, but I couldn't trade with them, I couldn't battle with them, and I kind of felt left out. So when I saw this game on the shelf, I begged and begged and begged my mom to give it to me, and she went ahead and bought it, but then she told me that she would give it to me for Christmas. But somehow, someway, young little Mike convinced my mom to give me the game early, and as a result, this leaf green save was born. So let's go ahead and turn this bad boy on. Now that is the sound of nostalgia right there. Pokemon Leaf Green version. All right, let's jump right into it. So, wow, you can see the stats right there. 231 hours and 46 minutes. I played this game a lot, and I had an almost complete Pokedex, 376 Pokemon. I remember back in Generation 3, there were 386, so I'm kind of curious to see what I missed. Oh, and that's right, these games had the little memory feature where when you turned on the game, it would show you what you did last. So I was moving around the Raikou, all right, and Mewtwo, I guess I had a lot of legendaries. Used a rare candy and a sharp and I made my Salamence hold the item leftovers. All right, well, that's an interesting choice, and we saved at one island. Wow, it's kind of cool being back on the Sevi Islands after all these years. You know, they've remade the Kanto region quite a few times since Fire Red and Leaf Green, but no game ever since these has had the Sevi Islands. Now, let's see, what did I have in my party for all these years? Wow! Okay, I had a lot of powerful Pokemon in there. Trickster, level 100 Gengar, a level 100 Salamence, level 100 Sharpedo, Tyranitar, Mewtwo, and Charizard. Let's check these guys out. Oh, and Pokerus too. So we have Trickster, which I met in a trade. And let's check out his moves. Psychic, Thunderbolt, Hypnosis, and Destiny Bond. So I'm guessing this was like a team that I used in battles or something. These Pokemon might be EV trained. I don't think they're like maximum EV trained, but I think I tried doing it back in the day. We have Salamence over here, Big Bad level 100, Dragon Claw, Earthquake, Fly, and Toxic. Toxic is kind of a weird choice for a Salamence, but whatever, you know, I was young. Fly too, kind of weird. Sharpedo, I guess this is the one I taught Ice Beam to. Ice Beam, Earthquake, Waterfall, Crunch. Tyranitar, look at that Generation 3 sprite. Crunch, Focus Punch, Earthquake, and Rock Slide. Mewtwo, oh my gosh, I loved Mewtwo back in the day. And I think this is actually the Mewtwo that I caught in Cerulean Cave in this game. Now, I had basically every single Game Boy Advance Pokemon game and Pokemon XD for the GameCube, so I did a lot of trades in between these games, but I think this is the one I actually caught in this game. And this right here, this Charizard, I remember this one because I cloned him a million times in Pokemon Emerald, but this one was my starter. This is the Pokemon I chose back in 2004. It's probably older than a lot of the people watching this video right now, which makes me feel very old. And let's see, it has Dragon Claw, Flamethrower, Blast Burn, and Fly. I remember back in the day, I used to love the move Blast Burn. Such a powerful fire move, it's basically the hyper beam of fire moves, but nowadays I would never use it because you have to rest the next turn. Just using two Flamethrowers is better, but you know, back in the day, Blast Burn seemed like a pretty good move. 
So that's my team. I was definitely packing power back in the day, but I'm really curious to see what I have in the PC. Now, the PC might not have that much in it because I remember I transferred a lot of Pokemon out to newer games, but this box actually has a lot of stuff, so I named this one Hoenn. I guess I had Hoenn region Pokemon in there, and Arcanine, and Machamp, and uh, Tentacruel. I think I tried organizing these boxes, but it didn't really last that long. Ooh, look at Ludicolo. I used to love this one, too, because of Pokemon XD and Mirror B with all the dancing Ludicolos. Oh, I loved that back in the day. Plus is the Plusle. I guess I got that in the trade. Little did I know how useful that would be for getting Glitch Pokemon. If only I knew about that back in the day, I could have completed the Pokedex. Oh my god, Feebas. If you guys did not try catching a Feebas in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, you don't know true terror. Let me tell you, finding a Feebas back in the day and getting a Milotic was nearly impossible. So Feebas, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, only spawned in like six tiles on Route 119 in the water. Now, Route 119 in the water, it was a huge, huge area, so it made it super hard to find. And even if you found the right tile, it wasn't guaranteed that you'd find a Feebas. And then to evolve this thing, you would need to feed it a bunch of Pokeblocks, and then get its beauty stat up high, and then eventually, after all that work, you'd get a Milotic. Oh, that thing drove me crazy trying to get these back in the day. I don't know if I have a Milotic in this game, but I definitely have it in my Pokemon Emerald. <laughs> okay, and this box is called Johnto. I'm assuming I meant to write Johto, but, you know, I was young back then. Johto, Johnto, close enough. And once again, the organization here wasn't that great. Kangaskhan is definitely not a Johto Pokemon, but we have Natu, Murkrow, ooh, so cool. Faratris, another Tyranitar. Oh, I remember I loved Tyranitar back in the day. It was such a cool looking Pokemon and the ability that it had that made sandstorms come out of nowhere. Oh, that was so cool. And I have another box called Jonto as well, but this one has an egg. I've had an egg in these boxes for all of these years. Well, you know what? I'm gonna have to go ahead and hatch this. I feel so bad leaving it there for... I haven't touched this game probably since like 2009, 2010. I need to hatch this egg for sure. Ooh, and a Sneasel. I used to love Sneasel, and in fact, Sneasel is still one of my favorite Pokemon. It wasn't really that good back then, especially because it didn't have an evolution, but nowadays Sneasel and Weavile are pretty good Pokemon. Polyrad. Zatsu, Meg Cargo, I really had a lot of stuff. And we have a box called Psychic over here with only Zinx the Jinx. I think that was the nickname that it came with when you traded for Jinx in these games. I definitely wouldn't name a Jinx Zinx, let's be honest. Whoop, and I have a box here called HGSS. I'm assuming these are Pokemon that I had and transferred to Heart Gold and Soul Silver. And now uh, that explains why the box is empty. Whoop, here we have a box called Water, and look at that Deoxys here. Now, this Deoxys is not legit at all. This Deoxys, I want. 100% hacked for. This is actually the only hacked Pokemon that I have in all of my Game Boy Advance games, and there's actually kind of an interesting story behind this Pokemon. So way back in the day, I had this friend who I'm going to call Peter. Now, Peter had an action replay for his Game Boy Advance, and I knew action replay was the only way I'd be able to get mythical Pokemon, because I couldn't go to the events, and I didn't even know when they were. So if I wanted to complete the Pokedex and get them all, I'd have to cheat and get them. But I was so worried about cheating in my Pokemon games. I remember hearing rumors on the internet where they would say, if you hack your game, it'll break and you'll lose everything. And as you could tell, I spent a lot of time playing this game, so I didn't want to hack at all. So I asked him if I could borrow his action replay, and he said yes, and I used it, and I made a wild Deoxys appear, and it felt so cool catching the Pokemon, but after I caught it, I felt so dirty, and I never used it, I always left it at level 4 where I caught it at, and it just felt so wrong. And at least on the Game Boy Advance games, I never used another hack. When I got to Generation 4 and I started messing around in my Pokemon Pearl version, that was a little different. That game, I walked through walls and did all the crazy stuff. I also have a few other legendaries in this box, Registeel, Regirock, and I noticed before, this Arcanine is named Fire in the Water Box. That's not where it goes! And there's two more eggs in this box. I really want to find out what those eggs are. We're definitely going to have to hatch them later. 
Here we have a box named Ground, we have a nice little C-Dot in there, Psyduck, Elekid, oh, there's the Raikou, I think that's the one we probably saw in the intro before, and I definitely didn't catch it in this game, I think I caught this Pokemon in my Fire Red version. Ampharos, this thing looks so weird in Fire Red and Leaf Green, look at that neck, it's so long, and ooh, is this it? Yes, there it is, this is my first ever shiny, my shiny Tropius that I caught in my Pokemon Sapphire version. Now I remember one day my mom was actually bringing me back from a, uh, I think it was the supermarket, and I was in the backseat of my car playing Pokemon Sapphire version, again running on that route with all the rain where you could catch Feebas, and I was in the grass, I started an encounter, and out popped this beautiful golden Tropius, and I will never forget that Pokemon. I think at that point I was playing Pokemon for like three years or so, and I was never able to find the shiny, and I really wanted one, so it made my day, it made my life when I caught this thing. Ooh, here's another egg! How many eggs did I have? I can't take any more eggs, the game won't let me, so unfortunately this one is gonna have to stay in the PC forever. You know, back in the day, I think it was just way too nice to say no to the daycare man, and every single time he would ask me if I wanted an egg, I would just take it, even if I didn't want it. Yeah, lots of cool Pokemon. We have some of the Hoenn starters, Blaziken, I saw a Grovile over there, Fampy down there. Ooh, this box, Kanto over here, has even more eggs, so yeah, my theory is definitely, it seems like it might be true. But let's see, we have a Kyogre, we have a Scyther at level 5 holding the leftovers. Why is a level 5 Scyther holding leftovers? Kind of weird. But oh my god, it was hard to get a Blissey back in these games. You had to get lucky enough to find a Chansey in the Safari Zone, then catch it, then raise its friendship up a whole bunch, and then finally, you'd be able to get a Blissey. And Chimeco, oh, don't even get me started on Chimeco. That was almost impossible to get in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald as well. Wabafet! Ah, and this box is also named Favorite, except this time I actually spelled it right instead of Favorites. Ooh, level 58 Dragonite. Where did I get this Dragonite from? Celadon City. So I must have got this from the game quarter, which means I must have spent a long time gambling in there. Also, not a bad moveset for Dragonite. Now, I have no idea what the name of this box is supposed to be. Eggs a Eevee? Eggs a Eevee. I... I don't know. But in this box, we have a level 100 Salamence, a level 39 Gyarados, Alakazam, Parasect, Jolteon at level 5, and a level 100 Electabuzz. And I think that brings us all the way back around. So yeah, those are my Pokemon. I had a lot of stuff in this game. I'm actually kind of surprised about how many Pokemon I still had left over. I really thought I transferred them all out to the 4th generation. But now at this point, I want to check out the Pokedex. I was so close to completing it, I'm kind of curious what I missed out on. So it looks like I caught basically everything in Kanto. I know for a fact I never got Mew. Oh wait, what's this over here? Wait, I had Bayleaf and Meganium, but I didn't have Chikorita. I don't know how that worked out. Actually, I think at some point I gave up on trying to complete my Leaf Green Pokedex and instead moved over to Pokemon Emerald. And I think the only reason that I wanted to complete it in Emerald instead of Leaf Green was because in Pokemon Emerald, when you sent out a Pokemon, it moved a little bit and did a little dance. Alright, let's keep seeing. Oh wait, I missed some Pokemon here too. I think... 196 and 197 are Umbreon and Espeon. Kind of weird. I know for a fact I had them, but again, I think I just gave up on completing the Pokedex in these games. And down here, yeah, Lugia, Ho-Oh, and Celebi. I know for a fact I eventually got Lugia through playing through Pokemon XD, but I never got Ho-Oh and Celebi in this generation. They were really hard to get. Ho-Oh, you had to play Pokemon Coliseum, and uh, Celebi, Celebi you just could not get without going to an event, so I missed out on those Pokemon. Now for the Hoenn decks, wait, I'm missing Pokemon from the Hoenn region? 307 and 308. I don't remember what 307 and 308 are. I feel like it's probably something that evolves into something else. I'll put the Pokemon on the screen right now. I don't remember what they were, but I, I'm sure in another game I got them. And down at the bottom, it looks like I was just missing Jirachi, and I'm also going to say I was missing Deoxys as well, because even though it has Deoxys in the Pokedex here, that was not a legit Deoxys at all. So, I got very, very close to completing the Pokedex, and it definitely was not easy in Generation 3. You had to have a lot of Pokemon games to get anywhere near completing the Pokedex. But I did get pretty close to completing the Pokedex back in the day. I am pretty proud of myself. Completing the decks in Generation 3 was definitely not easy. So, you know what? Let's go off these islands and let's go try to hatch these eggs. I really want to see what's inside of them. 
So we're gonna try to hatch these eggs. Now hatching them in fire red and leaf green is not the easiest thing in the world because as far as I know, there aren't really any great spots to just go, whoa. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. But there aren't really that many great spots to go up and down and try to hatch your Pokemon eggs. And you can't use those uh, flame body or magma armor abilities outside of battle. I believe they added that in Pokemon Emerald, where they would reduce the amount of steps that you needed to hatch your Pokemon. In Fire Red and Leaf Green, you had to walk all the steps. So we're going to cut until one of those eggs hatch. Okay, there we go. I completely understand why young Mike did not hatch these eggs, because hatching eggs in this game is a nightmare. Alright, so let's see what was sitting in those eggs for all of those years. A Psyduck. Ooh, a Snubble. Alright, I'll take that. That's an interesting Pokemon to get in Leaf Green. Wobbuffet. I was definitely breeding some interesting Pokemon. Tyrogue. And it is an Eevee. Aw, how cute. It feels kind of appropriate for the last Pokemon for me to get out of this to be an Eevee. And I think the best way to end this little exploration of my old save file is by playing in the game corner on the slot machine. Something you can't do in any of the newer Pokemon games. So let's go ahead. How do you even play this? You put three coins in and I think it just hit A. Can we get lucky, guys? Can we get lucky? Boom! All right, Pikachu, Staryu, and Cherries, come on, boom! Oh, we almost had the Cherries! Come on, come on, boom! Did I win something? I don't know how this works at all. I've never actually played a slot machine in my life other than in Pokemon. I think I won something, though, because it made a little happy animation. So yeah, guys, that was my 15-year-old Pokemon Leaf Green version save file. Again, so many memories with this game. I had a fantastic time playing through it, and I hope you had a fantastic time watching me relive my childhood, looking at all those old Pokemon again. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more just like it, I've actually played through my Pokemon Diamond save file and my Japanese Soul Silver save file as well. I'll have a link to those at the end of the video and in the description. If you want to see me play through more of my old Pokemon save files, let me know down in the comments section. I basically have every single Pokemon game, so I want to go through all of them at some point, and I think it'll be a lot of fun reliving all of those memories. So again, guys, thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll be seeing you in the next one.